Hi everyone, and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'll be painting the Vanguard Alpha, who is the leader of the Skitari forces in the newly released Kill Team. I apologize for my voice, but I was a bit under the weather when making this video. So after the miniature was assembled, I used a two-tone prime, black from below and Korax white from above, but it was completely wasted I feel, so a plain grey prime would work just as good, if not better in this case. The only part that I did not attach was the backpack, since it would clearly cause some issues while painting the cloak. The cloak is very distinctive for this figure, and I'm going to start off with that. These are the colors I'll be using, and I'm starting off by giving the inside and outside of the cloak a cover with a bad and black. Next I'm marking out where I want the brightest highlight to be on the cloak with Skaven Blight Dinge, which is about one third of the way up from the bottom. Next I'm going to take that Skaven Blight and water it down to about half water and half paint and start blending it into the black part of the cloak. Now there are many ways to do your highlighting and this isn't necessarily the best way. I could have started by painting the entire cloak with Skaven Blight and then shaded down the top part with watered down black paint and that might have worked better. Whichever way you choose, the technique is basically the same. Just apply multiple thin layers with each one getting closer and closer to where you want the brightest color. If you apply the paint a bit too thick, get a damp brush and feather out the paint to thin it. The main thing to remember is to always paint towards the color that's currently on your brush. Now I'm doing something similar with the sleeves. I'm using the watered down Skaven Blight and painting upwards towards the top of the arm. Now if you find that you've gone too far up the cloak, or your colors aren't transitioning as well as you'd like, use some watered down Abaddon Black and paint towards the shadows this time. Next I'm going to paint the checkered pattern on the cloak using Celestra Grey. I'm using a flat tipped brush for this, and it's nothing fancy, I got this for $1 at Walmart. The key here is to use as little pressure as possible so you don't flatten out the tip of your brush. This way you can keep the width of each line consistent. As you can see, I'm alternating between a small line and a long line. I'm also not concerned if it's 100% perfect, since it can be touched up with more Skaven Blight or Celestra Grey later. I'm only going part way down the side, as per the character art, and then I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom of the cloak. Okay, now that the checkered pattern is all laid out, I'm going to neaten up the edges of these squares using some Skaven Blight Dinge. I'm using a very small brush for this and I'm just trying to make sure everything looks 90 degrees. Next I'm going to make a thin line of Skaven Blight all along the edge of the cloak. This is basically just going to be an edge highlight, but a little bit thicker. I'm starting off thin for the first pass, and then I'll thicken it the second time around.
So here's how the cloak is looking so far. I'm going to use Storm Vermin Fur now to push the highlights a bit further in just a few places, mostly on the sleeves. I'm using watered down paint here and brushing upward to lighten the top of each sleeve, and also tracing the tops of the folds of the fabric. I'm also putting a small edge highlight in a few places, like the cuffs of the sleeves and the very edge of the cloak. So that completes the cloak. Now I'm going to do the remaining base colors on the mini before doing any more shading or highlights. I'm starting off with the pants and the gloves, and I'm using Mornfang Brown for these. Next, I'm mixing up a dark metallic color using a roughly equal amount of plate mail metal and a baden black. This color is going to be used on all the armor that's not being painted red. I'm mostly following the character art for where these colors go since this is my first Warhammer miniature, but I'll be using custom color arrangements on the other members of the Skatari team. So you can see here that I'm painting the boots with a dark metal color, and I'm also using it on the helmet and the armor plates on the gloves. Now for all the armor I didn't paint with the dark metallic, I'm using the fist in red. One of the biggest challenges with this particular mini was all the extremely small details. This guy is the leader, so I want him to really stand out, but I'll likely do a much speedier version with the other team members. Some areas that are easy to miss are the bit of armor just under his power cables and the disc all around the underside of the skull on his chest. So here are all the places that I painted the armor red. Next I'm going to paint the seals hanging from his arm and his hip. There's another one hanging from his left boot, but I didn't see that until after I'd already photographed the final product, so make sure you get that one too. For the ribbons, I'm using Screaming Skull, and you'll have to forgive me for not knowing what these are or why certain Warhammer miniatures have them. If you do know, please feel free to let me know in the comments. For the seals themselves, I'm using Corn Red. Next I'm using Shining Silver and Glorious Gold to mix up a very light gold color. You could use any gold and a bright silver for this to make a kind of gold alloy or gold plating appearance.
first place I'm going to use this is on all the ridged hoses or cables leading from the chest to the back of the Mini. There's also another cable like this running behind the legs. There's some kind of connector piece where the mouth would be and I'm giving this some of the gold as well. Okay, now I've switched to pure glorious gold for this part. The crest on top of the helmet is first getting painted with the pure gold, except for the bit of dark silver that attaches it. Now that that's done, I'm switching back to the gold-silver mix and painting all the points on the top of the crest. Next I'm painting this bit of metal on what appears to be some kind of cross between a mace and a cattle prod. An electro mace, I guess. And finally, I'm painting all the fine trim around the breastplate and the pauldrons. I'm using a very small brush for this, a zero I believe, and only getting a tiny amount of paint at a time. You could of course paint this part before the red, and then just edge your brush with the red paint up to the trim, and that might be a bit easier. There's a few areas that I want to look like glowing lights, so I'm going to paint those spots first with white scar. The first one is a spot on the helmet, which could be considered the eye and the main focal point on the head. Next I'm going to paint all the deepest gaps on the electro mace so I can give them some kind of glow. There's what looks like a small spotlight on the left shoulder and a few gaps in the gun that I also want to paint white. Next I'm going to paint all the extra cables using Dark Sea Blue by Vallejo. This is almost a dark grey or black, but it's different enough that the cables will stand out a bit from the cloak. And finally I'm going to use the Dark Sea Blue for the grip of the gun. Now I'm going to use some pure shining silver for various parts of the weapons. I'm first going to paint the grip of the Electro Mace. It's got some crisscrossing grooves that look like the handle of one of those old metal flashlights that I really want to make stand out later with some black wash. I'm also using this color for the center of the gun, for the small ring on the base of the pistol, and another ring on the end of this cable. As you can see the spiked tip is also painted with light gold, but I believe I forgot to mention that earlier. While I still have some of these colors on the wet palette, I want to do a bit of work on the backpack. Just like with a Skitari, I'm painting the ridged cables with light gold and the smooth cables with dark sea blue. Now I don't know if this counts as cheating, but I'm going to be using a Stedler micro pen to put some writing on the seals. And here I am just literally scribbling on the miniature. You could get something much more detailed with a brush if you have a steady hand, but I bought this pen years ago for stuff like this and I finally got to try it out. Next I'm mixing up a bronze color that I'm going to use for the head of the mace and the casing of the gun. I don't want it overly shiny however, so I'm making a roughly 2 to 1 mix of Balthazar Gold and Mornfang Brown.
With the mace, I'm going to start off by painting the four flanges and avoiding the gaps where I've put the white. Now with just a tiny amount of paint on my brush, I'm gently dragging the brush across the gaps. This should only hit the ridges and leave the white paint below untouched. Now I've mixed up a small amount of the dark metal color again to paint the shaft of the mace. You can see that I had it painted shining silver, but I didn't mention it because I hated the way it looked and I planned on changing it. I also noticed that I missed what looks like a cable connection point on the inner thigh, so I'm painting that as well. And since I now have more of the dark metal in my palette, I might as well use it on the backpack. I'm going to paint all of this except for the accessories that are sticking out of it. There's a tiny screen on the back of this backpack, and I'm painting that with shining silver. And the last thing I'm doing is using the dark metal on the belt buckle. For the next part, I'll be doing all the shading, and here are all the washes that I'll be using. I'll be sure to mention each one as I use it. The wash I'm using first is Non Oil Gloss. I'm planning to use gloss varnish on areas that are difficult to highlight because the detail is either too fine or they are difficult to reach with a brush. I use this on the boots and the power node on the leg. I'm also using it on the power cables that were painted with the dark sea blue. Now I'm switching to Agrax Earthshade Gloss. I'm using this on all the gold and bronze colored areas. You could of course use regular Agrax Earthshade for this, and you'd end up with just a slightly less shiny metal afterwards. I'm doing my best here not to let any of the wash fall into the white areas, but if they do, I have a damp brush ready to pull the wash out. And you can always do a bit of touch up later with some white if you miss any spots. Now I've switched to regular Nuln Oil and I'm using this on all the remaining silver and dark metallic areas of the miniature. I'm also using Nuln Oil on the grip of the gun. For the gloves and the pants, I'm using regular Agrax Earthshade. You could use Agrax on the ribbons of the seals as well, but I'm going to go with Seraphim Sepia. And the final wash I'm using is a 2 to 1 mix of Carolberg Crimson and Nuln Oil. This is for all the red areas of the miniature, which is all the red armor plates and the red seals. Now that all the shading is done, I'm going to start the highlights and the finishing touches. I'm first going to tint the white areas on the front of the midi and on the weapons with some Temple Guard Blue. I've watered this down with about twice as much water as paint so that it's now a light blue glaze. I'm just adding a few layers of this to the eye and to the front light and letting it settle into the recesses around the lights. I'm then dropping some of this into the grooves on the gun and the mace that I painted white earlier to give them a blue tint as well.
Next I'm going to highlight the metallic areas. For the light gold areas I'm using Stormhost Silver. You could also use the Shining Silver from Army Painter that we used earlier, but I find that Stormhost is just a tiny bit brighter. I'm doing a basic edge highlight here and then a reflective line of silver along the very center. I'm also going to use a storm host to pick out all the little spikes on the mace. For the crest I'm doing an edge highlight on the top and picking out all the little rivets. For all these cylinders on the gun I'm doing a thin line of bright silver straight down the middle. I'm also going to pick out any small details as well, like the ring on the bottom of the gun, the spike at the end of this cable, and the hilt of the mace. Now, still using the Stormhost Silver, I'm going to do an edge highlight on the dark metal armor. I'm starting off with a helmet and I'm only aiming for the top edges of the metal. I'm not putting this paint on a wet palette or mixing it with water because I want it fairly thick. I don't want to risk any of it running into the grooves of the helmet. And then finally I'm doing some edge highlighting on any part of the boots that I can easily reach. Now for all the bronze areas I'm doing a gentle dry brush with pure glorious gold. Take your time with this and do be gentle with it. I was going too fast at one point and a few gold flecks came off and stuck to my black cloak. Next I'm going to do the highlighting on the red areas, starting with a reapplication of Mephiston Red. I've got this watered down to about half paint, half water, and I'm just using small amounts at a time. I'm starting about two thirds of the way from the bottom of the area I want to highlight and brushing upward to where I want it to look the brightest. With these small areas of the helmet, I'm painting all of it except where it meets the silver color. I want to leave a shadow between the red and the silver. After one or two layers of the Mephiston Red, I'm then going to use Evil Sun Scarlet and do the same thing, but only to the top one third of the red areas. And then I'll finish this off by doing an edge highlight on all the red plates on the shoulders and the legs using Evil Sun Scarlet. Next I'm going to highlight the top surface of all the fingers using a 1 to 1 mix of Mornfang Brown and XV88. For the legs I'm just highlighting the highest part of each fold in the pants. The ribbons are getting an edge highlight with the original color, Screaming Skull. And similarly with the seal, I'm using Corn Red to put a dab in the center and then highlighting all around the edge. Now for one of the toughest parts, just due to the size of the area we're working with, the skull insignia on the chest. Currently I'm using White Scar to paint the right side of the skull. Following that I'm painting the extending rays on the opposite side with white. Once that's done I'm using some pure black to paint the other sides of the skull and the rays. I deliberately overpainted the white side of the skull so I could try to get a nice straight edge with the black. And that's the last of the painting on the body of the Skitari. So I'm now going to finish up the backpack so I can finally glue these pieces together. I'm starting off by painting the camera or the light, I can't tell which it is, on the top of the backpack with Eschen Grey. I'm also using this grey on the control panel and the antenna rod.
Just like I did with the blue lights on the front, I'm making yellow lights on the backpack. I've decided to treat the device on top as a light. Both are first getting a couple coats of white scar. Next I want to introduce a few bright colors for the buttons and the screens on the backpack. There are two tiny buttons on the back, one is getting a small dab of Sotek green and the other Moot green. There are two small gauges, one is on the screen I painted silver earlier and the other one is on the hanging control panel. I'm painting both of these with Wild Rider Red. The top of the antenna is getting shining silver, and the last hanging bit is getting Balthazar gold. Next I'm doing the washes, and I'm only using two for this. First all the gold areas are getting Agrax Earthshade Gloss. The entire rest of the backpack is getting Nuln Oil Gloss. The only thing you want to be careful about is keeping the silver screen clear and the gauges visible since they're both inside depressions. Now I'm going to tint the lights on the back using Lamenter's Yellow Glaze, and I've mixed this with a bit of water. It takes two to three layers to get it where you want it, and I did end up using a darker wash, Cassandora Yellow, to tint around the bottom of the light. Then just repeat this for the second light. Now I didn't do a lot in the way of highlighting for the backpack, just some Eschen Grey reapplied on top, and then a bit of edge highlighting with the same grey. For the dark metal, I used some thinned down shining silver and just painted the top third or so of these metal discs. And the last bit of highlighting was just a quick dry brush of glorious gold on the top half of this hanging device. Next up is the base. I wanted two kinds of earth texture on here, and the first one is going to be sterling mud. I'm just dabbing this on in random places, and then I'm going to let it dry before I go any further. Once that's dry, I'm going to add some sand. So first I'm using some PVA glue and water, and covering everything that doesn't have sterling mud. I'm going to cover the base in sand, shake it off, and then give it time to dry once again. I'm holding the mini very lightly here because it's not yet protected by varnish. Now I'm using a one-to-one -one mix of Dryad Bark and Steel Legion Drab to completely cover over both mud and sand. The final step for the ground is to give it two layers of dry brushing, the first one with Steel Legion Drab and the second with Talarn Sand. And lastly, before I do the varnish, I need to paint the rim of the base. Some people like to color code their teams, but for me, I'm going with German Grey. Next, I'm going to use Tester's Dull Coat on the mini and the backpack, but I want to cover up the connection points where the glue is going to go. You can use a bit of poster putty for this, and it may not be a necessary step, but the glue holds better with a cleaner surface. After the varnish is dry, I'm going to use super glue to connect the pieces together. I don't want to add too much super glue or it'll get squeezed out around the edges, so I'm applying a thin layer all around the connector with a toothpick. Now I'm going to get his backpack seated properly and lay this guy down for half an hour or so to let that set. And the last thing I want to do is add a bit of grass. I don't have any tufts that are small enough for a base this size, so I'm just going to make my own. I'm using PVA glue mixed with a bit of water, and I'm making small patches of glue in random places. Then I'm just sprinkling on a bit of static grass and letting that dry. And there you have it, the Skitari Vanguard Alpha Kill Team Leader. Very special thank you to all my patrons for your continued support of these videos. It is very much appreciated. If you want to be part of the community, come check us out on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to ask any questions you want in the comments section below, and thank you very much for watching.